Well, greetings, fam. Once again, Pastor Trey, back at you. I send you greetings from the Townsley household. Everyone here is doing very well, and we pray the same for you. We're moving on from last week, where we discussed, we finished up, as a matter of fact, our series on the opportunity is ripe. R-I-P-E, where we discuss certain areas of focus that we need to take or focus on in order to take the greatest advantage of opportunity. Well, I didn't want to move or stray too far from that. So this week, what I want to begin discussing is another aspect of taking advantage of opportunity. Now, as you've heard me say many times before, we believe this to be the year of access. We believe God has given us great, tremendous access to so much this year. But there's one thing about access. Access is given, as I said earlier, but success is achieved. I'll say that again. Access is given, whereas success is achieved. Now, what that means is success is an opportunity for work. Success, our level of success will be determined or our achievement will be determined by how much we work. Now, perhaps you've been one of those people who said oftentimes, well, I don't have a lot. A lot wasn't given to me. I wasn't born with a silver spoon in my mouth. I don't have, I don't have, I don't have. But there's one thing about that that I'd like to bring up. No matter how much you do have or how much you don't have, there is one particular thing that will always determine the level of achievement that we that we achieve in our lives. Want to know what that is? That one thing is our perspective. Yes, our perspective. Now, perspective is, is loosely defined as your outlook, the way you view things. Perspective, and I like that definition because perspective is, or looking, or an outlook is active. An outlook is is the way you personally view, you actively view something. The word see would be passive, S-E-E. To see something is passive, whereas to look at something is active. Someone might ask you, did you see that car driving down the road? And you might say, yeah, I saw it. But if they ask you a question, did you look at that car driving down the road? Well, that's a whole different ballgame because you can see something without much input. I can see a car drive by me, but when I look at it, I take my focus and I purposefully put my focus on that car. So that's the difference between looking and seeing. And that's the reason why I love the way that word, that that, that word um, perspective is defined. My outlook, the way I look at something. Now, perspective for each person is different, and that's the reason I believe that many people or everyone has different levels of achievement. Perspective for me, though I'm living in the same world and might have the same opportunity, my perspective might be different than yours. Case in point, you can have a car driving down the street, or you can have a driver in a car driving down the street, and he looks to the side of the road, and he sees a sign on the side of the road that says, speed limit, 55. And he or she looks down at their odometer and they say, okay, well, I'm going to do 53. And they're driving along and they're happy and they're listening to the radio. And all of a sudden, a car drives up behind them. And they begin to blow their horn and they look in the rearview mirror and you see this. The driver is belligerent, throwing hands everywhere, making all kinds of faces. And eventually, they drive around. And as they drive around, they roll their window down, make some kind of gesture, and then they say something. What do they say? Well, probably not what you're thinking. What they say is, you could at least do the speed limit. Right. You could at least do the speed limit. And then they drive off. Now, take that situation. You've got one road, two different drivers driving on the same road who see the same sign, but they have different perspectives. Driver number one says, I see the speed limit sign. What that means to me is, under normal circumstances, I cannot go over 55 miles an hour. 55 is the limit of speed. Whereas driver number two looks, and as driver number two said, they view the speed limit as, well, you could at least do the speed limit. At least. So where, where driver number one sees it as a cap, driver number two sees it as a floor. Two different perspectives, same situation. Another story that defines it perfectly, and I love, I, I love hearing this story, but it's the story of two men who are roommates. Well, one man has a fiancé. And he decides to surprise his fiance with a picnic. So he gets his picnic basket together. He makes the sandwiches and he gets the fruit and he gets the drinks and he put them all. He puts it all in a basket and he grabs his keys and he walks outside to go get in his car to go pick her up. Well, as he walks outside, he steps out and he looks up and he sees a cloud. He sees all the clouds in the sky, a sky full of clouds. And immediately it begins to rain. 
thunder and lightning and the rain just downpours. And he looks and he says, he, he looks up to the heavens and, and then he grits his teeth and he shakes his fist at the heavens and he says, God, how do you ruin my plans like this? And he goes back in the house, drops his basket, goes in his room and slams his door. Well, his roommate's standing there and he looks at him and he says, something outside has made him upset. So he walks outside. Well, I don't see anything out here, but he does see that it's raining. And he looks up at the clouds and the sky, and he looks back down at the ground. Then he looks back up, and in a similar fashion, he raises his hand to heaven, but he doesn't shake his fist. No, he opens his hand, and he says, thank you, God, for this rain. This rain that's watering, giving all the animals water, and it's giving us water, and it's, it's watering the ground that's bringing forth the crops, that puts food on our table, that sustains our life, that keeps us alive. He says, God, thank you for this rain. And he turns around, goes back in the house, closes the door, and he rejoices. Yet again, you have the same situation, two different men in the same situation, but two different output, two different outlooks. And their outlook, look at what the first one achieved. Right now, he's angry. He goes into his room, and he's mad, mad at the world, mad at God. But the second one goes in rejoicing, and he's productive throughout his day. Why? Because of his outlook, his perspective. So I believe that perspective, no matter how much opportunity is in our face, no matter how much we have or have not been given, perspective is the one thing that can determine how much we either do achieve or don't achieve. And in order to bring that point home, I'd like to bring up a name that you might or might not have heard of. Steve Jobs. That's right, Steve Jobs. Now you say, Pastor Trey, I've heard that name before. Matter of fact, most of us have. Now when we think of Steve Jobs, what do we think about? We think about the inventor of Apple. We think about um, our iPhones. We think about billionaire. Yeah, and all of those things are accurate. But there's one thing about Steve Jobs that we might not think about. We might either might not know or we don't think about. We do know that Steve Jobs was the co-founder of Apple, the company that makes the iPhones and the Macintosh computers and so many of the products and devices that we use today. We know that he created that company. But do you realize that nine years after he created that company or he was the co-founder of that company, that very same company that he created fired him? That's right. In 1986, they told Steve Jobs, you got to go. You're fired. Wow. Now, I want you to consider what happened in Steve Jobs' mind. Steve Jobs was a man who created a company. And after a series of events, that company said, we don't want you anymore. Go. Steve could have had one of two outlooks. He could have had the outlook that apparently he didn't have that says, I created this company. Who do they think they are? They can't fire me. Woe is me. I'm undone. They can't do this to me. Or Steve could have had the outlook to where he said, you know what? I'm not going to allow this to stop me. And years later, Steve Jobs made the quote. It's documented. He said, getting fired from Apple was the best thing that could have happened to me. The best thing. Why is that? Because it spurred him on. Because he had the right perspective. Look at all that he achieved. He attributes the fact that he got fired from the very company he created, achieved so much more, came back and made that company even greater. Does that remind you of anyone? Think about it. Of course it does. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, who is God, the living God, who created, as the Bible says, everything that is in creation. Jesus created it. But the very people that Jesus created are the ones who killed him. The very people. Can you imagine that? Wrap your mind around that. Wrap your mind, wrap, if you can, wrap your head around that. Jesus was killed by the very people he created. Now, make no mistake about it. Jesus said, I lay my life down. Nobody takes it from me. I lay it down. But why was Jesus able to do that? Because he had proper perspective. And I believe that if you and I can become men and women of proper perspective, that nothing can stop us. Look at the greatness that Jesus achieved because he had proper perspective. And though on a lesser scale, look at the greatness Steve Jobs achieved before he passed on because he had proper perspective. Now, you might ask the question, well, how do I become a man or woman of proper perspective? And in order to delve into that, I like to go to the Bible and I like to talk about one of the biblical figures that I love, my man, Joshua. 
my man Joshua. Now, many of you all have heard of Joshua. Joshua was Moses' successor. When Moses passed on, Joshua took up the reins. Now, Moses was a great man. Moses was, Moses was, his, his work was unprecedented. Matter of fact, the Bible says of Moses that Moses talked to God face to face. Whoa, <laughs> Moses talked to God face to face. So Moses was, Moses was bad. Moses went and stood in front of Pharaoh with a staff in his hand and told Pharaoh, you're going to let God's people go. And he did it. Moses was huge. But as the story goes, there came a point where Moses died. Moses passed on. Now, all of the children of Israel were in mourning for about a month, for about 30 days, because Moses was a great man. Then all of a sudden, God comes to Joshua and says, Joshua, I know you're in mourning, but get up, be strong. Be courageous. Take this people that I've given you and take them to the land that I've promised their fathers. Now, Joshua, think about it, was a man. Joshua wasn't a superman. Joshua was just like you and me. He was human. Joshua had the opportunity right now to either choose the right perspective or the wrong perspective. Consider some of the things that might have gone through Joshua's mind. Joshua was a man who was in mourning because Joshua was very close to Moses. Joshua could have used the excuse, well, God, I'm in mourning. Well, God, I don't know that I could do this. God, Moses was a great man, and he was. But God, look at what Moses went through. The children of Israel, on many accounts, wanted to kill Moses. They wanted to take Moses' life. They did. They were a rebellious people. There were many a times, imagine what Joshua was thinking right now. Well, if they wanted to kill Moses, what are they going to want to do to me? I don't know about that. I don't know about that. But if you read through the Bible, Joshua was a man who had great success. And I believe that much of that success was attributed to his perspective. So how do I become a man or woman of good perspective or of proper perspective? What I think we need to do, we need to be like Joshua. Joshua had the option to be defeated, but he chose not to. And the very first point that I'd like to make about Joshua's life is that Joshua, though he had a great feat in front of him, Joshua took life in bite-sized pieces. I believe that that's point number one, thing, the one thing we need to do in order to be men and women of proper perspective. Take life in bite-sized pieces. Joshua had a huge task set in front of him. Huge. As a matter of fact, the Bible says that when Joshua was well, was well advanced in years, he still had not accomplished taking over all of the land that God had given the children of Israel. But Joshua understood that if he tried to take all of this on at one time, he was going to fail. Joshua took it in bite-sized pieces. Joshua would attack one land at a time at God's direction. And I believe that that's the reason why he had so much success. One of the reasons why. And I believe that if we apply that to our lives, that we can have the same type of success. Think about it. What are some of your goals? Some of your big goals? Some of the goals, as a matter of fact, that you might have been trying for years that you simply cannot overcome. Perhaps you have a goal of getting out of debt. And I know you're young people, so you probably don't have that much debt. And I pray that you stay that way. But should you find yourself in someone's debt? Don't look at it from the perspective, I can never get out of this debt. Or even adults, if you're in a mountain of debt, be like Joshua. Take it in bite-sized pieces. Say, okay, what's my smallest debt that I owe? Or what can I afford to do right now? What power do I have right now to do? And once I take care of that, then I move on to bigger giants. Then I move on to bigger lands. It's the same way Joshua did it. Perhaps you have a, a goal of losing a certain amount of weight. And you've tried for years, and I can't get this weight off. I can't, I can't, I can't. Wrong perspective. Be like Joshua. Take one bite-sized piece at a time. You can do something. What is it that you can do? Perhaps you have the goal of reading, the, reading through the entire Bible. Many of us have said, man, I want to read the book from Genesis to Revelation. But we've never really accomplished that. Take it in bite-sized pieces. Get one of the Bible in a year plans or whatever you have to do. But don't try to take it all at one time. Get just a little bit. Do this much today. Then tomorrow, I'm going to do this much. Be consistent, be diligent, but take bite-sized pieces. And I believe that if we do that, we can take advantage of all of the opportunity that's coming up in front of us. Amen? 
Okay, well, what's the next thing that I think we need to do? I believe we need to be like Joshua and revisit the past. But don't just revisit the past. Revisit past victories. That's one thing that Joshua did. Joshua revisited the past, but he looked at all of the things that God had done for him in the past. And how many of us know God never fails? God never fails. There's one account that amazes me when I read it about Joshua. Joshua had gone into battle. There was a certain number of kings who, ganged, who came together and they attacked someone who was under Joshua's, um, for lack of better words, under Joshua's protection. But they cried out to Joshua, Joshua, we need you to come and help us fight because these kings have attacked us. Well, Joshua took the challenge. He gathered his army, rode out to battle, and he went in on them. He went all the way in, but it was a whole lot of them. Joshua got to the point to where as the day was coming to an end, Joshua realized, I'm not going to be able to take my full vengeance out on all of these people. So what did Joshua do? Did Joshua say, hey, y'all, let's stop. We're going to come back tomorrow. We're going to keep killing y'all tomorrow. So y'all go home for now. Make sure you're here at six o'clock in the morning. No, Joshua didn't do that. Joshua did something that amazes me. In the sight of all of Israel, the Bible says Joshua looked up and he spoke to the sun. He said, son, don't move. He looked at the moon. He said, moon, stay in your place up until the point that I finish what I've got to do. The Bible says that for a period of about 24 hours, the sun did not move up until Joshua took his vengeance on those who came against the children of Israel. Wow. Wow. How do you do that? Now, speaking to the sun, <laughs> that's, that's not a hard feat. I could talk to the sun right now. But when you speak to the sun and tell it, don't move, and the sun says, yes, sir, that's a feat. That's an amazing accomplishment. Now, how was Joshua able to do that? I believe that he was able to do that because of what he had seen in the past. Joshua saw the amazing things that God had done with Moses, and he made a memorial of that. In the back of his mind, Joshua remembered, hmm, I remember God doing this. I remember God doing things in his own life. I remember God doing this. So if God did this and he did this, why can't he do this? He revisited past victories. How many times have you had in your life where you thought everything was done? Woe is me. I'm undone. It's over with. Close the curtains. My life is done. I cannot get past this. And all of a sudden, God comes through on your behalf. How many times? If you were to stop and think right now, I'm sure you could come up with two, at least three times. Well, think about it. If God did it for you then, seriously, this is not just cliche. Why wouldn't he do it now? Why can he not do greater for you right now? But I believe when we revisit those past victories, the things that God has done, it bolsters our confidence, but it also gives us the right perspective. And we can be like Joshua. We can speak to the elements. I can look at the sun and say, son, stop moving for the space of 24 hours and it will obey me. But it's not the sun. It's the power of God. The son of God is who it is. And when I have proper perspective at that point, I can achieve great victories and take advantage of opportunity. Which leads me into my third point. The third thing I believe we need to do in order to be men and women of proper perspective is to look at the whole picture. That's right. Look at the entire picture. I don't know how many of you all have ever done a, have, have ever put together a puzzle, maybe a thousand piece puzzle. But when you open that box, if you take one piece of that puzzle out of that box and look at it, you know what you're going to be? Puzzled. Because you have no idea what that's supposed to be. It's only that you look at the box top the picture, the big picture on that box top that you know what this piece is supposed to represent, where it's supposed to go. It's only when you have a full perspective that you can understand or you have an eternal perspective that you can understand many of the things that God is doing. Joshua did that. How many times in our lives have we had tribulation? How many times have we had hardships? And like that guy in the story before, we raise our hand and shake our fist to God. God, how could you? When God is sitting in heaven, God has an eternal perspective and God wants us to have an eternal perspective. But because we're so myopic, we look only at one thing. We can't really see the big picture. But when we step back and we look at the big picture, we realize well, the Bible says I'm going to have tribulation. As a matter of fact, tribulation works patience and God wants me to be patient. He wants to work patience in me. 
So in order to get that in me, as much as it hurts, God says, I'm going to allow you to go through the fire. I'm going to allow you to be tested. I'm going to allow you to be tried. But it's only so that you can come out as pure gold. How many times have we looked at death and we've shaken our fist at God? Unfortunately, many of us are experiencing death that's close to home, the same way Joshua did. Joshua could have had the perspective, no, God, I don't want to serve you anymore because you allowed Moses to die. How many times have many of us said that? But we don't realize that God is so gracious. When you get the eternal perspective, you realize that death, death is not an end. As a matter of fact, I love the quote that I heard years ago where it said, in this great sentence of life, death is not a period. It's only a comma. Think about it. In a sentence, when you have a grammatical sentence, the period means that that sentence stops. But when you insert a comma, that means that it's only a pause. It's just a pause and you're transitioning to something else. Well, when we get the eternal perspective, we understand death is just a transition. It's just a comma. It's just pausing. God is actually running the show. God is producing this film. Death is just making a cameo appearance. But it's only when we get the proper perspective or the eternal perspective, when we look at the big picture, that we can get a perspective like that. That's what Joshua did. And that's the reason I believe he had so much success. And if we can apply these three principles and probably a few more that you can think of, I believe that we can be men and women and children of great success. Can you believe that with me? Well, I sure hope so. Well, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up for this week, but I pray that you go back, go through this, share this video with someone. I believe that these are really, really good points that God is speaking to us because he wants us to be so successful. Amen. Okay. Well, up until the point that we see each other again, I pray that you continue to pray. Never stop praying. Always pray. Continue to stay safe. Continue to be a blessing as God has been a blessing to you. Until next time, talk to you later.